going to look at some of the important meteorites in history, tiny number, and some of the objects that were made out of uh, meteoritic iron. Uh, so, in ancient times, pure metal was a rare find, called native, because it was just found as lumps of metal. And uh, the pictures here, gold nugget, uh, native copper, silver nugget, and that was the only way you had metals until uh, smelting and other processes were made. So we're going to start by looking at different parts of the world, uh, 13 different uh, meteorite objects and the particular name places, so you can pause this to look more closely. And we're going to start off with, with number one uh, in, the, um, in the US. Uh, Hopewell uh, Native American Indians uh, in Illinois, uh, USA uh, were actually uh, earlier a uh, Stone Age culture without any metals. They used stone tools, wooden weapons and cordage and some areas had clay uh, for pottery. And here are some uh, stone uh, materials that, that were used. But at a burial site uh, uh, 2,000 uh, years old, uh, finding metal beads. And these were, uh, you can see in the right, uh, left hand uh, corner, they're beads that are almost sort of like macaroni in that they have been curved round. And the metal was very hard and dif difficult to work. Um, but in the uh, burial mounds, they, they found um, nearly two dozen uh, beads. And uh, one of the um, archaeologists actually used some of the uh, meteorite to try and fashion a bead. And this is a cross section of, of what he made. And then we go to uh, uh, Mexico. Uh, just south of the USA-Mexican border, Casa Grandes, and a 12th century uh, town with uh, lots of remains of, of buildings. And in one of them, they found the meteorite that is on the right there. And this was 5,000 pounds, massive, and it was in one of the rooms in a tomb-like construction wrapped in linen, considered one of their most uh, precious possessions. And still in Mexico, the um, Chicxulub uh, on the Yucatan Peninsula, and it's where an asteroid struck. So this is uh, where there is a crater. And those two maps show its location today and then how in uh, 65 million years ago, how uh, the shape of North America, S South America and, uh, has changed and, and the position of it. Um, but what happened was the meteorite uh, vaporized and its materials really went worldwide. So when you look at the photograph of rock on the right hand side by the ruler is an iridium rich layer. And 65 million years ago, same time as the uh, meteorite strike. So there are dinosaur fossils below it and um, uh, only, and it should be avian dinosaur fossils. There were no other types of dinosaur fossils. So different, different map. And uh, many of the, they're just an example of the dinosaurs that are uh, extinct. And you can also see the animals that uh, weren't, uh, didn't go through the extinction event. Meteor meteorites 
contain um, nearly 500 times um, more iridium than you would expect to find uh, on Earth. Uh, so the, this particular age of this uh, meteorite strike is significant. And then going down into South America, Bendegro in Brazil, uh, the uh, meteorite here went through a horrific fire in the museum. Uh, not can't really see the damage that was done behind it with the stonework, um, but an awful lot of artifacts were were missing, um, were burned. But the meteorite was uh, fire resistant. It had come through high temperatures through the atmosphere. And the museum is asking any visitors to the museum who had been previously to send photographs to help with the restoration and recovery of the materials that they can. Uh, and then going to uh, South Pacific in Greenland and uh, there's a narwhal tusk um, on the right and a tip of metal so it turned it into a spear, into a lance, and the meteorite that it came from, you can see a, a picture from 1897, and then to locate uh, Greenland there, Mercator map, it's been enlarged at the top, um, but it, it's an island which is known as Meteorite Island off um, the coast of Greenland. Uh, and then we're going to uh, Alasa Hoyk in uh, Turkey and a dagger. It's got gold uh, uh, for the hilt but the actual blade is meteoritic uh, iron and thought to be um, 4,000 uh, years old. And the thing about ancient metal objects, there was native gold, silver, copper uh, but didn't have the means to smelt iron out of iron ore. And so these were meteoritic iron. And you can determine it's meteoritic iron by the amount of iron and nickel, which is very like the iron meteorite compositions. Then we're going to the Valley of the Kings in Egypt. And in uh, Tutankhamun's uh, tomb, uh, there was a dagger, and this dagger was actually wrapped in the linen binding, so very, very close to his body, and it was thought that this was a very, very precious uh, possession. Uh, it was described as iron from the sky, and uh, the blade is of meteoritic iron, and there were also other uh, iron objects from uh, meteor uh, in the tomb as well. And then traveling a little up the coast of the Mediterranean Sea uh, to Syria and a Bronze Age axe head. And in the Bronze Age didn't have the, the means of uh, smelting iron. And um, this is nearly three and a half thousand years ago. And then in a day in uh, 2013, uh, people saw this enormous bright light and it was breaking up and an enormous explosion. And they say uh, 25 times more than a, an a, uh, atomic bomb. And it devastated over 7,000 buildings, broke windows in 100,000 homes, and uh, 1,000 people were injured, uh, temporary blinding, broken glass, and some with, with burns. None were killed. And um, you can see the location in, in Russia there. Uh, then going to uh, India with 
the blade, the sword blade made of uh, uh, meteoric iron, um, actually in 1621. Uh, it was known how to uh, smelt iron there, but the composition of the blade, you know that it is from a meteorite. But what is more important, the uh, Emperor Yahanghikir um, actually described the event. At dawn, a tremendous noise arose in the east. It was so terrifying that it nearly frightened the inhabitants out of their skins. Then, in the midst of a tumultuous noise, something bright fell to the earth from above. And he described um, that it was sharp, cut beautifully, as well as the very best swords. And then another uh, meteorite in Semchan, Russia, which had some iron parts and some stony iron parts. And you can see the green olivine crystals that are part of the stony iron meteors. Then going to Zhu in China, uh, looking at an axe from 3,000 years ago, investigating it, doing x-rays of it, and determining that the small blade was made of iron uh, from a meteorite. Uh, now, little activity. So design what you would make out of a fragment of an iron meteorite. <laughs> So draw a picture of what you would make. Choose between a pendant, a tool, your choice, uh, an amulet, good luck charm, or an artwork sculpture. Now, try and <coughs> work out how you might make your object. Describe a few steps that you might uh, actually use, but don't do the experiment. And if you've done a good job, uh, maybe you can design a second item. And there's more about meteorites. Go to Smithsonian Learning Lab and in the discovery section there, put in touch a falling star.